Hi, this is the 10th video on quantile regression. Uh, I think I mis misplanned uh, this chapter, uh, but I have to finish this. Uh, we are going to study the estimation of the quantile regression. So far, idea was simple and uh, the identification was also simple. There were just a few differences and just the problem is many of the existing theories for the mean regression do not apply here. But that's okay, you can like, uh, it, like there are many counterparts of the existing theories. Uh, the problem is estimation actually. The biggest problem is if you can estimate beta, then the, the other problems are kind of minor, uh, I think. So let's think about uh, estimator here. As you can guess, we are going to minimize the objective function, as you can, as you may guess, as you may have guessed, uh, beta hat will be defined in this way. Right? So this is exactly the counter a sample version of this objective function you may define this as you may define this as uh, q hat b again uh, by the way again we fix tau and drop it from the notation we everything depends on tau everything is specific to tau if you change tau everything has to change but i will uh, hide it, it does not matter. And as you know, if it's, if tau is, for example, if tau is 0.5, it becomes a uh, least squared, least absolute deviation estimator. So that is just a special case of the quantile regression model. And the first order condition, the first order condition from this minimization problem is zero equals to also it is parallel to what you have seen uh, earlier now oh, and have to have this <clears throat> And this this graph it it looks a little bit uh, different from the nice nice kink function like this. So it will be it will look like it looks like it's hard to draw here. I hope I had uh, I hope I had a pencil. Actually, I do have a stylus. I tried to use that, but does not work well. So here, and what the 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 sample criterion function? Uh, no, sample criterion function look like looks like this. So suppose that there is a minimum, then it go. Oh, why it doesn't work? It goes like this, and then another goes like this, and another. So it's it's piecewise linear, and um, and if n is large enough, it looks very much like a quadratic function. But in fact, if you look closely, there is a linear uh, segments, and here and there. And another problem here is another problem is that. So let's just use this. Another problem is that, uh, no. Another problem is that, so suppose that your, your criterion function looks like this. So, but there may be a flat area. This is the problem. So piecewise linear and nice con um, like concave fun uh, convex function, but there is a flat area flat area here, flat area here, uh, here. So minimum, there are 
there are multiple minimizers. In the end, this probably the probability of having this uh, large minimizer is small, but still it is possible. Or if the 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 slope is very small here, then it's hard to detect where is the minimum. So that's a typical problem of uh, this quantile regression estimation. So computational problem. Um, problem one, second derivative of the criterion function is zero almost everywhere. So think about this. It looks like this. Uh, what, what it is? Uh, anyhow, uh, so it's piecewise linear. That means the first derivative is constant here, and second derivative is zero everywhere on this uh, linear piece, linear segment. And the second derivative is not defined here because it's not differentiable at the kink. And then second derivative equals to zero here and not defined, zero not defined. So there are a few n number of points, n, num n number of points where uh, the, the second derivative is not defined and elsewhere second derivative is zero. So it makes all the um, uh, algorithms, so e there are existing algorithms uh, to find the minimum or the maximum uh, they usually rely on the second derivative, but they cannot be applied. So all the algorithms, uh, most, uh, say, say, uh, most of the standard uh, minimization, optimization algorithm uh, rely on, you use the second derivative, they do not work. So if you have heard about Newton Rapson uh, Rapson method. Uh, they are the most famous minimization or maximization algorithm. They don't work. This is a big problem. So you have to have a different algorithm, which which might be slow and uh, which may cause problems when the sample size or the dimension of the regressors increases. Uh, the, and again, again, the minimum may not be unique in sample, unique in the finite sample. And if there is a flat area, then every, every point on the flat area is minimum. So then in this case, you have to define how to choose uh, the minimum or how to detect, or maybe your program may not understand, may not allow such a multiple minimum, like multiple minimum problem and then uh, may end up in an error. Your algorithm may be, may return an error. So, so this is uh, another problem, potential problem. By the way, why is it a computational problem? In theory, these problems do not happen as n goes to infinity. So they are, they are finite sample problems. So this is a big difference. In, as, um, in the picture, it's clear as n increases, the linear segment will be smaller and in the end, it will be smooth enough. Everything will be smooth enough, then uh, it will be uh, differentiable, so twice differentiable, and the, the minimum point will be also one point. But that happens only when, only in the limit, but in your data, your data does not converge to infinity. So. That is a problem. Uh, and okay, then set aside the computational problems. Suppose that computational problems, I'm not going to discuss in more detail. It's, it's like usually your, 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 your uh, program, your like Stata has a uh, program and there are many existing programs. And if your data do not work with the program, then, then seriously think about that. I guess it's hard to, most of the existing programs will uh, do their job, will resolve your problems. 
So, but just in case, if you, if they don't think about this, and I'm going to then I will go to uh, the asymptotic normality. How do how do I prove this? And from this part, it is more about theory. And if you are interested in econometric theory, this is very very important. And the derivation is very important because we are not using the second derivative. I will show you, I will briefly describe how to obtain asymptotic normality without a uh, second derivative. But if you are not interested in econometric theory, then what you need is just the result. Uh, just remember the, the variance matrix, asymptotic variance, and just remember it is consistent, it is asymptotically normal with a specific variance matrix. Then just what you need to know is how to calculate the variance in practice or what's the problem and what's uh, what's a practical issues there. Uh, anyhow, let me do this. Uh, to do that, I will review uh, review of extremum estimation uh, theory, M estimation theory. We considered, let's uh, first, we started from something like Uh, it's not li, let's say gi, doesn't matter, it's just a review. The first of the condition, this was the first of the condition, if g is differentiable, we had, just let me just continue from the earlier equation, uh, use the Taylor theorem around Uh, and here you have to find the list. What? So you have, if it's differentiable, apply the Taylor theorem to obtain is and then then uh, we can rearrange after multiplying square to n on both sides we can rearrange we rearrange rearrange them the equation to have minus this inverse, uh, this guy, inverse, and then uh, square to n of of course you, uh, let's just so we know this, the second term converges to a normal distribution and the first term converges, converges to a, uh, a fixed matrix. Then each term converges to minus say G zero inverse and the second term converges to uh, normal distribution omega zero or omega, normal distribution omega. Then you have the desired result. This is three line summary of what we have done earlier. Now, we will assume asymptotic normality for quantile regression. We will assume, uh, we assume that the quantile regression estimator hat beta is consistent. So consistency is not that much different because consistency does not use, consistency does not use uh, the Taylor ex expansion. So showing consistency is not that difficult and it is pretty much obvious and does not cause much problem in showing consistency. So uh, we'll, we will just believe that it is consistent. And uh, we are going to now, from the earlier setup, we have uh, this form. Uh, 
minus tau times x. So this is in this now we have this. The it is already the gradient, it is the derivative of our check function. So it's uh, it is not differentiable. As I said, it's, uh, or, uh, I mean, it's, it's not, its derivative is zero almost everywhere. So you cannot, you cannot use the Taylor expansion at all. Um, and if the derivative is zero, G is not invertible. That's another problem. The, this is always zero, then it is not invertible. Uh, so it, 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 this becomes zero. This becomes almost always zero. So your the tail expansion does not work. So it is the problem. However, uh, however, the problem here is, and similarly, even though even even the bigger problem is, so let's. So we will use a trick. Uh, we are we detour the derivative of a gi. Derivative of gi is always zero. So instead of using what we need is so here, of course, we have. We, we need beta and then not theta. So instead of using g equals to this guy, we are going to use, we will use g, like something, instead of g, we will use If we can change now, 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 because G is not differentiable, G is not differentiable, the changing the order of differentiation and expectation causes some problem. So already this is not well defined. Differential derivative of G is not well defined. So uh, this is not easy to handle. But if you take expectation first, integrate this first and then derivative differentiate that then later you will see that it works well however if you, you if you want to use this you cannot use this approach you have to change the approach uh, to have this kind of thing that is uh, that is uh, our our approach so in this case it is is uh, differentiable you will see that under mild assumptions. Then the sketch of the proof is, the sketch is, the sketch of the proof goes like this. The starting point is the same. We start from the first order condition, but we are going to change it a little bit. So also up to this point is quite similar. So we want you to approximate this guy first order condition at beta hat around beta zero. That's the same, but instead of Taylor expansion, we are going to use some different approaches. Observe this. Uh, minus let me continue writing this I it is a typo 
So uh, what I did is I added, so this is canceled out by this, this is canceled out by this, this is canceled out by this. So in the end, the equality is simple. It is just uh, subtraction and addition and subtraction. And I'm going to define this as A plus B plus C. So C is the larger term. These two terms uh, in total, I will call them C, where A, A is easy. You know how it works. It converges to normal distribution if you multiply square root n, so it is easy to handle. And B is a difference in expectations. Also, it is easy to handle. It will converge to zero. Uh, and if it converges to zero, if beta hat is consistent. But C is not easy. C is the problem. We have to handle C. We want to have, uh, we want to have handle C. Uh, center limit theorem, and before doing this, let's think about, let's calculate, let's see, uh, observe that, note that, expectation of GI beta is, GI beta is given by this. So it equals to expectation of this. And using the iterate law of iterated expectations, you may write it as, uh -huh. uh -huh. I write it as I will. My mouse does not work well. Sorry about that. You have seen this earlier. So I am going to directly write it. So this is now, this is the expected value of G beta. So it is con continuous uh, with respect to beta if this part is continuous. So if the CDF is continuous, it is continuous in beta, which is uh, reasonable. We have continuity in the CDF. So it's easy to see the result. And then, now let's think about each term. A central limit theorem or A. And I believe it is easy enough. You can show that uh, by the standard CLT argument. Converges to normal distribution with uh, omega is expected value of GI beta times GI beta transpose. So it's a simple, a simple result. The result is very simple and I will write it as it is. And by the way, uh, now let's, let's plug in the, the functional form of G inside the expectation. Then what you have here is you have this twice and this twice, and the second term is transposed. And you can summarize it as it's squared, it is squared, and x i x i transpose. This is what you have. And again, use the law of iterated expectations again. If you use the law of iterated expectations again in here, then the square, the square term uh, and becomes expectation of oh, tau one minus tau xi xi prime. So now what you need is just to show this guy equals to the first, the, the inside expectation. It simplifies to tau times one minus tau because 
uh, let's think about this. So the square term becomes, let me simply just write it as, uh, yeah, let's, let's just keep doing this. Yi smaller than xi prime beta uh, squared minus two times tau and indicator function yi smaller than xi transpose beta and finally tau squared. This is what we have. And here it is the indicator function is always zero or one. So regardless of them, uh, no matter what its value is, anyhow its square is always the same. Zero squared is zero, one squared is one. So square does not matter at all. So square is gone, tau, and this is another, 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 another indicator function. So I am going to write it as one minus two tau plus tau squared. And then if you take expectation on this guy, then we know it's, it becomes, uh, uh, it becomes, and then So we already knew this, therefore this becomes tau and if you calculate that, you are going to see this result. And it is easy. This is a key term in the variance. So remember, omega takes this form. Uh, you can show this by, by, simple, by simple algebra in there. And another, now let's, we are going to, uh, we are going to use Taylor, exp uh, oh, oh. we are going to use Taylor expansion for B. E. We will use, we use Taylor expansion for B, not directly on the original term. So remember, remember, uh, I will, I will borrow this to here. We have this, therefore, we can, it, it, it is differentiable. It is differentiable with the derivative being derivative at beta zero equals to um, expected value of, we have done this earlier again. So the derivative becomes this guy. We are going to uh, this PDF times xx prime. We will define this as g. Now we are going to use this as g. Then apply by the Taylor theorem. By the Taylor theorem, we have expectation of g i at beta minus expectation of gi beta zero equals to something like complicated steps included, but in the end it's g times uh, hat beta minus beta zero plus small term. Small, uh, small terms will be ignorable in the end, approaches to zero. Uh, so uh, you don't need to worry too much about this too much about what it is. Uh, and in here, let me see what can we, what can we do? Uh, so nothing special. It's in the end you have this. So in, in, in B, the second term, a, a second term will have the, the similar form as we did uh, similar to this guy, have something similar to this guy. And so we are happy if, if C is gone, if C disappears then everything will be perfect. 
we have now need to show C equals to small o p 1 over squared n. So if you assume this now, before showing this, this is the technically difficult part. If C, C term C is small o p after uh, multiplying squared n, then observe that what we had is zero equals to a plus b, b plus c. Um, let's write it again. This was a plus g. This was b uh, plus c uh, was what we had and multiply skirt n on both sides and rearrange to have skirt n hat beta minus beta zero equals to minus g inverse times skirt n of a. Does not matter, gi beta zero plus square 10 of the inverse square 10 of C. So here is minus again. Uh, then if, if this is true, then square of C will be, it will be small op1. G, it will be G inverse times small p1. So anyhow, G inverse is just a constant matrix, just a matrix, so it does not diverge. So in the end, everything will be small p1. So the final term will uh, be small enough to ignore, ignorable. Therefore, we do not need to worry about, uh, we do not need to worry about uh, the, Asymptotic normality. We have asymptotic CLT for central limit theorem for this guy, so it applies the same. In the end, uh, then let me let's just get to the point. So it will be inverse normal distribution zero omega, and so thus. Thus, the asymptotic variance of beta hat is G inverse omega G inverse uh, prime transpose, but G inverse is uh, symmetry is symmetric, so G inverse is uh, symmetric. Therefore, you don't need to transpose it. And if you review that, G takes this form and uh, G takes this form and uh, omega takes, omega, what, where was omega? Omega takes this form. So I will copy this. Where G and omega equals to this guy and G equals to this guy. This is a little bit complicated. Complicated, more complicated than the mean regression, but kind of you see some kind of similarity, uh, some kind of similarity like x prime x inverse. And, and instead of sigma squared, you have this. This plays the role of sigma squared in the mean regression. Um, and then what remains is we need to show Proof for term C. This is very complicated. Uh, this is complicated. We need need to use the stochastic equicontinuity uh, technique. This is a kind of uniform convergence. This is closely related to to uniform convergence. This is a, actually, this is a, it is a, the stochastic continuity is a sufficient 
condition for uh, the uniform convergence. But it is a like a more uh, more difficult version of uniform convergence, and it means that if uh, it is stochastically equicontinuous, the name is a little bit more complicated. Name is very complicated. Then it implies a few things. Like for example. Uniformly converges, here comes uniform convergence again. Uniformly converges to expectation. Expectation. So you may remember this condition, uh, the, the uniform convergence argument earlier. At the time, we used continuity and like boundedness and a few things. But stochastic continuity is another approach to that, but Stochastic continuity is more widely applicable, but it is harder to understand. So at that time, I did not introduce you about the stochastic continuity. And also another in interesting result is for any theta hat converging to theta zero, uh, Actually, it is almost equivalent to the uniform convergence. For any, for, like, so at, remember, theta had converges to theta zero, and sample mean of GI converges to the population mean. When you combine these two convergence, uh, still the combination converges to the same thing. The answer is yes or no, but it is yes if the function is stochastically equicontinuous. And, um, for any convergent sequence, we have, it's more complicated. Um, uh, by the way, I changed the notation from beta to theta. Uh, I just I'm just talking about general setup, so you may interchange between theta and beta, theta hat, beta hat, uh, theta zero, beta zero, this notation. So this, uh, this converges to, it looks a little bit weird, but what's strange, what's so it converges to zero, it converges to zero. These are obvious by the earlier two conditions, two results. But now what I'm doing here is the convergence rate at theta hat and convergence rate at theta zero is similar. So the convergence rate, the difference at theta zero, the theta hat and difference at theta zero is going to zero, going, going to the same point zero at a similar point, at a similar rate. So even if you multiply skirt n, still it converges to zero. So it is a strong assumption, a strong result because not only it goes to zero, it also goes to zero, but also both go to zero after multiplied by skirt n. So you are showing a very quick convergence to zero, right? Uh, we just, I'm not going to prove this. It's impossible to prove here without uh, much more preparations. So I will just use this result. This is the stochastic continuity and use this result exactly to show C converges to zero after multiplied by squared N. Then you're good. Uh, we have done our proof. Uh, if you are interested, by the way, if you're interested, um, if you are interested in in this read on Andrew's uh, handbook paper, handbook chapter. So there are, he, he derives a few examples of functions that satisfy, that satisfy the stochastic continuity. Uh, and 
so in if you if you think you are going to use this assumption in your dissertation uh, then you cannot show this every time you need so instead you can just show that your functional form is one of the don andrews's uh functional form in this paper so by his theory uh it satisfies the continuous stochastic continuity that's typical a uh, storyline in in my paper so if you are interested read that paper Okay, it was a long video. Uh, thank you for watching this. I will continue in the next video.